Question 45. Is. Is meditation advisable and if so how should we meditate? Meditation is certainly advisable for those seeking to develop communicative mediumship, such as clairvoyance, clairaudience or clairsentience. Furthermore, many practicing mediums continue to meditate to help them sustain or improve their links with those in the spirit world, and principally with their spirit guides. Potentially it can enhance any form of mediumship, including physical or healing mediumship. Although those who practice spiritual healing will often find that they are effectively meditating whilst administering or channeling healing energies. Although I must add that meditation is not a guaranteed means to develop any form of mediumship. If someone's pre-birth life plan is to follow some other pathway, and undoubtedly one that will in time prove more valuable to the soul, then this should be honoured and appreciated. Meditation is also recommended by some doctors and counsellors to help relieve stress and anxiety because it can help to calm us and bring a sense of inner peace. Although rather than meditation it may simply be called relaxation. Meditation, or relaxation, can be undertaken alone or in a group. This can be in silence, with a guided talk, or with gentle, calming background music playing. As for how we should meditate, well, there are no set rules. The best format, in my opinion, is whatever one feels most comfortable with on any occasion. However, there are some more disciplined and dedicated forms of meditation that originated in the East, in India and Tibet, for instance. I personally believe a relaxing meditation should be taught and practiced at the start of day in all schools. This would undoubtedly help calm children, and I believe it would help them become more focused during the day, and perhaps more importantly it would in time also help them develop as more intuitive spiritual adults. Furthermore, meditation is universal, and should in no way be considered to favor any religion or as a religious act or practice. One approach to meditation is to relax the physical body by first tensing and then relaxing the muscles to clear any inner tension that may be held within. This can be while seated in a chair, or laying down. Some people like to visualize a symbol, or a pleasing scene, perhaps a flower or a garden, or the flame of a candle. The object of mental exercises is to help discipline the mind so that one's thoughts do not keep wandering onto daily activities. If they should, the idea is to acknowledge them but not to dwell on them, but to allow them to fade away and not return. This may be easier said than done, but all who are well versed with the practice say that it gets easier in time. The time spent in meditation can vary greatly from one person or group to another. Some people meditate daily, others once or twice a week. Some people spend 10 to 30 minutes in meditation, and others spend one or two hours. While some Indian mystics spend days sat cross-legged in altered states of meditation. It is said that a true aspirant of meditation will be able to meditate, even if for the briefest period of time, almost anywhere, on a quiet seat in a park leaning against a tree, or even while out for a stroll in nature. I expect we can all relate to moments when we find ourselves daydreaming about nothing in particular and lose track of time and people around us. This, more or less, is meditation. Something that pleased me was to read a comment from the Dalai Lama who said that the best form of meditation is sleep. It is certainly a time when we can be connected fully with our spirit nature. On a personal note, in one sense I spend very little time in meditation and when I do I am just as likely to fall asleep. This is one reason why I love the Dalai Lama's comments so much. However, in another sense, my life is very much one never-ending meditation. There are few if any days that I do not acknowledge my spirit nature and contemplate how I might better be of service to advance and promote spirit teachings and truths. My life is therefore filled with a constant reminder of our eternal nature.